Hello and very warm welcome to the students to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss a poem of Tawfiq Rafat and though apparently the poem is very long but actually it's a very short story type of poem which reflects a lot of things and cultural aspects of Pakistani people as Tawfiq Rafat is a Pakistani poet and although he writes in English language but then he is concerned about the plight of the people, about the miseries of the people and about the things which happen to them because of their ignorance, because of their non-availability of facilities and that is why it speaks about the life of the people who are not at the verge of happiness most of the time and they suffer because of multiple aspects of life. So let us enter into the poem and see what happens. The title of the poem, Gangrene, is really very interesting because it's a kind of a very dangerous type of fatal situation when we receive an injury or we receive some kind of push and as a result of that our bones may be broken or some uh, blood vessels may be broken and when the blood is not able to reach at certain part of the body that part of the body begins to turn greenish black and as a result it smells out very bad also and ultimately it has to be removed from the body it has to be amputated and so the man becomes a permanent symbol of the suffering. Gangrene is such a dangerous type of thing. And that's what we today are going to talk about. Let us see where and how this gangrene occurs. For this purpose, let me read to you the first part of the poem. There are no stanzas in this poem. There are no set of lines in this poem. Simply the poet has narrated the story of a young boy in a, in a, in a very you know, story type of manner and that he has made different sections also so that the reader may be able to concentrate. Let us see what this poem is going to be. So first of all, here is Gangreen, the very first part. Let me read to you. They brought a boy, me 12 years old, his arm wrapped in a dirty bandage. A quite well-mannered boy who smiled shyly when I tickled him under the chin. He was from my ancestral village, the son of a carpenter who was a cousin by marriage of a tanner I traded with. It was therefore natural they should come to me for help. So that is the very first introduction of the poem, Kangreen. And the story begins with the fall of a boy from the roof, he fell down, and as a result, he got his elbow bone broken and, and fractured rather, we should say. And the narrator of the story says that they all brought the boy to uh, him in order to get him treated. And in that way, they were telling something which had happened to them. And that is why in this part of the poem, we have two, three characters. One, the narrator himself, who is narrating the story of the boy. Then is the boy who is the sufferer. And thirdly, we have uh, a type of tanner uh, who is, uh, you know, dealing in the business of the hard, uh, hard hides of the animal or the skins of the animal. This narrator had a trading business with that person and as a result, they brought the boy to him so that some kind of treatment may be made. So story is not beginning at the time when the boy falls, but it's beginning with the time when the boy is the most critical condition. And that condition has compared the villagers to come to this man, who is a businessman, uh, by the way, as the, as, the, as the words go to let us know. The writer or the narrator also talks about the boy that is very simple, innocent, even at the stage of this misery of this gangrene which has occurred on his arm he is happy when he is tickled as the, as the poet tells us so that is why the boy is happy but all the boy is not that happy though he's in pain but but all the family is very much upset because of the gangrene which has appeared on his arm let's go to the second part of the poem so it's here it says uh, that the story was simple simply this the boy had fallen from the roof while flying a kite. The damage was negligible, just a shattered elbow. From that height, he could have very well broken his neck. It was a miracle considering he fell on a brick pile. I looked at the boy. He seemed quite modest about his achievement. Or perhaps he will still thinking, he was still thinking of the kite. Now look at that. Here is something that we must try to understand. The writer says the story is simple, but it's not simple because its effects are going to be very hard and harsh. And according to that, the simple villagers are thinking that the boy fell down and miraculously he was saved. But they are not realizing actually 
that the path has been started for boy's death actually because gangrene has come on his arm and that is what which is going to fail him all his life. The writer tells us the narrator of the story or the poet says that these people were thinking that it was negligible, it was small injury, it was small part, so that's why they didn't take it seriously. But then one of the social issue has also been highlighted here that the boy was trying to collect some kite, a broken kite, a patang, and that is why he fell down. So he's highlighting that if you are involved in such kind of activities, the boys may fall down and for all of their life they may become bad as well. So in this way, the writer has tried to highlight one of the social problems which we are suffering from. Why don't we have separate grounds and fields to fly the kites as in foreign countries it is? Why do we fly kites in the streets? Why do we fly kites on the roofs? And as a result, we have number of injuries. So one of the social issues issue also has been highlighted. Besides, the poet is using the technique of the post-colonial or at least the 20th end of the 20th century and start of the 21st century now our techniques, storytelling techniques, that first of all a critical point is told later on, the parts of the story are revealed to us. This is therefore post-colonial Pakistani story as well as far as the style is revealed. The style of the poem is also very modern because it does not bind itself with the rhyme scheming, with the stanza making, rather simply tells the story in a very you know, beautiful way. So far, we know from the stanza that the boy is in very painful critical condition uh, and, and the people are saying, Miraculous, he is saved. He is not saved because they are very simple and simple mindedness of the villagers is also being pointed out by the poet. Let's go to the next part of the poem. That is the third part of the poem. The only mender of the bones in a village is the local wrestler. They showed him the arm and without so much as a second glance, he got busy with oil and lint. It is truly a miracle, he said. The boy could have broken his neck. This is nothing but a fracture. After pocketing the money, he patted the boy on the head and sent them very happy. So again, uh, we are going to witness here in, in this part of the poem two important things. That medical system is very poor, is very insufficient. No professional doctors are available to these villagers. No, how a wrestler can be the doctor of the bones, but then these villagers don't have any other option. So that's why they take it to him. And it occurs from the character of the you know wrestler, the bone maker, that he is also very greedy. Instead of examining it uh, in, a, in a thorough way, in a complete way, what he does, he gets them just a look at the broken arm and say there's nothing it's a miracle that the boy has uh, has survived otherwise he could have died when he was falling down and got money from them the treatment is not going to result into anything so that is why the writer is pointing out simplicity of the villagers and then the kind of uh, expertise of these people to treat these villages is equal to zero almost and that is why he is in a way condemning the attitude of this wrestler as well who is actually a bone maker working as a bone maker in the village as well. Let's see further what does the writer bring before us. The next part of the poem says, but the bone was stubborn and refused to mend this more serious than I thought, said the wrestler. However, there is nothing to worry about. In four or five days, he will be running round as good as new. So he said it again and scolded the boy for showing so much pain. He pocketed the money, satisfied the relatives, went home, but the bone didn't mend. This part of the poem, uh, you know, is, is, not, is not that important. So that is why uh, it's just a type of repetition uh, that the poet is saying, that, that the bone couldn't get repaired and so these people went again uh, towards this uh, man and he said that it would be okay after some time. He was satisfied, he satisfied these people also and second time he pocketed the money in his pocket. So condemnation of this, uh, you know, person who is involved in making up the bones is continued by the poet. He is rather condemning in a very harsh way and highlighting before us that his only concern was the money which he got from these people. Next part, this much they told me, I guess the rest, the days of growing anxiety, the rest was refused to admit this mistake, the unlimited optimism of parents. But when the limb blackened and to stink, they got frightened. They could sense the fear in the rest of the two, though he insisted it would be all right. The boy is in the power of a jinn, he said, but he could not hide his fear. Now, this is what the ultimate result of this negligence was. Negligence on the part of the parents and negligence on the part of that wrestler who was trying to mend the bone. Bone didn't mend, but with the, he, he was satisfying these people. Okay, he will be quite okay. But very soon, what happened? The bone started to 
the broken bone started to give its results. And these results definitely resulted into gangrene, stinking was there, color was changing, then they got frightened. And again, this man, the wrestler, is not telling them the truth and the story, not advising them to take this boy to some hospital to get treated. He is saying he will be quite okay, he will be quite okay. And rather uh, raise the optimism, already existing optimism of the parents by saying that he's got the power of the gene and that genie will help him survive. Genie would not come until and unless doctor comes and the treatment is properly made. So the boy is in trouble at this moment and responsibility goes on more on the wrestler and less on the parents. Parents are uneducated, poor people. They are not having any information and knowledge. And same is the case with the, this man. And, and therefore, proper guidance is not coming. And one life is under threat. This is what the writer is trying to highlight. This is one of the common problems and issues in our village life, in our rural areas where the government, where the, where the people do not reach. And even if they reach, they, they are unable to change the, in the wrong optimism and the wrong treatment and the skill of the people in the village regarding the human health. So let's go and see more what does the point says. For example, here uh, we are entering into the next part. It says, so here they were too late as usual, come at last to their only contact in the city. I couldn't stand the animal appear in their eyes. My proximity to the mission hospital was surely a passport to personal attention. I changed quickly and went with them. The mission surgeon, a greedy, tactless butcher, took one perfunctory look. Gingrini said in English, thou must come of Okay, so this is part of the poem where the story reconnects with the first stanza, a first part of the poem, you know. Uh, and here, uh, the, the, the narrator is telling us that after the wrestler, the, the boy was brought to the city hospital, but the condition in the city hospital also proved the same. He defines this doctor, a surgeon of the same hospital, by saying that he was a tactless butcher. He just, just had a a bird's eye view, a temporary look at the arm of the boy and said that gangrene is there and so the arm has to be cut off. So this is what the similarity uh, in index is there between the, the wrestler, the village bone maker and the doctor of this village who is also of the same nature, though his education and skill may be more, but he's still a very, you know, a person who is indifferent to the pains and the troubles of the other people and is very greedy also and, and therefore the only option that he gave to these people was that the arm would be cut off. So the boy is in trouble now because he is going to lose his arm and it's only because of that. Although the narrator says that he was the only help, he lived close to the hospital, he was in the city, he was the only person to whom they could come. But if this at all had happened first, the boy could have saved his life. So let's see how does the poem closes itself. And this is the stanza. Uh, this is a part of the poem, sorry, uh, which brings us to the second close of the poem. In this case, he was right, of course. I had already guessed by the smell. Still my heart sank when I look at the boy. He was watching a flock of pigeons in the courtyard. How shall I tell them? I thought, how shall I tell them? In the end, I did not have to. The tenor guessed my face tactfully. He took me aside. I told him he then went and talked to the father. This part of the poem is very, very interesting because here, a contrasting personality has been made available to us by telling these two wrestlers who minted money and the doctor of the hospital, he also minted money, he was greedy. In contrast to that, the narrator has a very soft heart, very human heart, very humane heart, very loving heart because he is even unable to let the parents know the reality and he is even unable to bring the facts before the boy and he waits for some time but he's anxious, he's stubborn, he's worried and this goes to show that he's got the golden heart in him and perhaps this is the heart which humanity needs most of the time especially that humanity which treats the wounds of the human being that needs to have this type of spirit but ultimately the facts have to be brought so that is why he told the very fact to the father of the boy. Let us see more how does the poem goes to end. I have never seen anybody so indignant. Instead of a grief, there were only anger, or the anger was because of the grief. Amputation, he fumed, was out of question. What use is a son with only one arm? I would rather he die. He lets go. He said, we are wasting our time. I'm sure the wrestler can do it. If he must stay, there is the other hospital. So in this way, the, the narrator brings us the condition of the father and the parents that they were very much upset at the amputation issue and the salvation of the 
of the problem of gangrene, they uh, were very much up. They were said that the boy should have died instead of that, and they were not ready for that. So the first thought was that they should go back to the same wrestler, or they should go to some other hospital. So that goes to show the worry and the passion and the sentiment and the grief of the parents who are going to lose their one son and they say that if one arm is not there, what is the use of the boy? So here also some kind of training and psychological upbringing is required that if something has happened, life should be saved instead of all the time thinking that he will be useless without an arm. This word has become to the fact that even amputated two legs, two arms, people are surviving and they are doing good in this world and they are playing also. They are they're the athletes as well. Why do these people think that in that way? First they damage the arm of the boy because of their ignorance and later on they are not ready to save his life. And this will definitely the simpletonness, simplicity of these people and other factors combined together will bring death only to life. So basic purpose should have been to save the life rather than to save arm or to save any other thing. So the writer is trying to point out to the social psychology of our people, the beliefs of our people, the simplicity of our people and as a result number of issues and problems which are occurring because of this in Pakistan. He is driving the attention of the people that the people should come forward in order to help the suffering humanity by spreading awareness, education and bringing skilled people in order to save the lives of the suffering rural people. The poem closes with this stanza. Let me have a reading with you. I argued and pleaded it was no use. There is no time. I said the gangrene is going like a storm. But they would not listen. I saw them go with a helpless rage burning inside me. As I felt the hospital, it was a lovely spring day, fresh after the rain. Uh, I, and I felt ashamed of being so healthy. I heard the boy died on the operating table. So that is the end of the poem and it's really very saddening and tragic end. It's just like the end of the wedding and the flood also. It began with happiness but ultimately ended in tragedy. The same poem written by Toffee Truffer. Here also the happiness of the boy was there of catching a kite but it turning into a tragedy. That the man, the narrator of the story, again his uh, Sympathy for the humanity, love for humanity is shown that he was enjoying the spring day, he was healthy, but he felt very sad. Why he's healthy when such a tragedy is going to take place? Imagine there's no connection between the boy and the villagers, only that business way he's related to these people. But still, when he looks at the human being who is going to lose his arm, who is going to lose his life, he is very sad, he's especially sad because the parents were thinking in the same tone that again would lead the boy's life to end. He was so sad. So that's why he went to the hospital in order to look at the boy and he found that the boy had died on the operating table. So that is the tragic end of the whole poem. Now, uh, students, this poem can be, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> don't be so serious. Just just look at the poem and try to prepare the critical appreciation. Taufik Rafat's, uh, you know, introduction should be there. Substance of the poem, the theme of the poem, the simplicity of the people and the simplicity and ignorance of the medical men in the rural area and their wrong beliefs of the people, lack of education, all this results into the loss of life. That is the theme. And the young boy as a young character is definitely the person who needs our attention, who needs our care and who needs to save his life with the help of us people. He cannot do it all the time. Boys, young boys and girls, they play, they get damaged, but we are the people who should you know, try to save their lives. That's what the Tafik of is trying to highlight. Besides the fact it's a Pakistani, uh, Pakistani poetry, Anglophone poetry though, but still it carries number of social problems, number of reforms which are needed, which are crying for redressal. And that's why literature is playing its part by making a beautiful statement and letting the people know the doctor whoever would read it, the wrestler who would, would read it, the boys and the girls who would read it, they will learn a lesson from it. That is the most beautiful job being done by modern literature and Taufik Rafat deserves lots of kudos and appreciations and appraisals for writing and highlighting such issues of the people. So if you include all that in your critical after session, definitely you are going to get good marks. Besides that, look at the structure of the poem. Though it seems to be in stanza form, but it's a very irregular uh, stanza irregular scheme, uh, rhyme scheme and then thematically the, the parts of the poem are connected together. The story-like situation is there and that connection makes the whole story connected together. It starts with the end of the story, brings the middle thing and ultimately again reconnects in the second last stanza. So that is all what I can say about this poem. Though long but it can be shortened through this many ways. Uh, concern the notes on it also. This is not the end, this is not the final. So if you like it, 
uh, do not fail to hit the subscribe button and the like button and yes comment are also welcome i would sometime look at that and respond to that as well so till that time thank you very much for watching and keep happy keep peaceful and keep loving as well so that's it from me for this